As you know from yesterday's full-length show and well, just being a conscious human being, Star Wars is a cultural phenomenon that no one could have predicted, least of all toy makers. In fact, Kenner, the company which received the contract to make Star Wars toys, barely had any ready in time for Christmas 1977. Bernie, my first guest at the Loaded Question Brewery live podcasting event held in September, was glad to talk about his personal connection to Star Wars toys and Luke Skywalker's speeder. Take a listen. So glad to have Bernie here on the EPS podcast, broadcasting live from Loaded Question Brewery in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and he is the first person up tonight. And you chose the land speeder from Star Wars, the original Star Wars, before it was called The New Hope, right? It was just Star Wars. Just Star Wars. Just Star Wars. And uh, what brought your eye to that? Did you have one of these growing up? No, I did not have one of these, and so I always wanted one of these. And so I'm thinking, yeah, as soon as I saw it, I'm like, ah, I know what that is. So I don't know if you're like me, but when I was a kid growing up, I actually, um, we bought a lot of our Star Wars toys at thrift stores and garage sales. I remember going, even back then, they were pretty expensive at the store. They were. Um, But... The question that, you know, so I was glad whenever I came across something like that, that somebody was, you know, only a couple dollars. Um, The question that Bernie chose to talk about tonight is why did they make it? And it seems like a straightforward question to today's standards, because if you go up and down the toy aisles, Mm -hmm. every time there's a movie, even before it comes out or a TV show or anything like that, they already have all the toys stocked up. In fact, a lot of modern day Star Wars fans Mm -hmm. um, know a lot of they can guess some of the, uh, the the plot twists from the toys that come out a month before the movie does. Right. Um, But. Things were different back in 1977, weren't they? They were. They were a lot different. And so we were talking about um, just why was it made. Yeah. And so uh, I would say why it was made was because you wanted to get little kids involved. It was so new. Yeah. And there was nothing There was nothing like it. You know, um, uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Mm-hmm came out and there was a few other things but there was nothing quite like uh star wars and i can remember seeing it as a kid right and standing in line and 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 everything and just uh it just captured my imagination so i believe why they made it yeah was okay we've got these little kids right or they got their parents or whatever and they you know it was a phenomenon and so now it's i want to do this i want to be luke skywalker i want to be han solo or 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 something like that and i would say that a lot of kids like myself that grew up in the mid 70s this was this key to some of the things that yeah. they would go on to do later on in life and you know, so it just would catapult them i, to I was gonna say things. have you seen some of the newer disney star wars movies like the first awakens and, and everything um i gotta say some of it almost looks like because I know J.J. Abrams is of that generation. He saw the movies as a kid. And a lot of the way that those movies pan out almost looks like they're playing with the toys. You know, they and do. like they, I remember re- reading about when they were making The Force Awakens how uh, they had, by that point, computer gr- g- graphics. And he was like, ah, let's put another TIE fighter up there. Let's put another right. X, you know, just being able to kind of living out the child fantasy of being able to just make your own story as you go along with Star Wars. And that's what this toy is all about, right? Exactly. But I don't see very many toys like this being made in today's world, you know. I think, and that might be some pop culture right there, where at this time, kids were playing outside Mm -hmm. or, you know, you didn't have the electronics or or, or things like that. You didn't have computer games. So you had... You know, you, you had to do things manually and use your imagination, whereas now you can put on a Oculus goggles and right. it puts you in the Everything's seat done for you. Uh, yeah. of one of these. Right. So um, I don't think... I think toy making, to some degree, has has gone away. Right. Where it's been replaced by, you know, vid- the video game. And, and almost every toy comes with some kind of internet relationship. You know, you, oh, exactly. you buy a plastic toy, and you know, I have a seven and a half year old son, so he 
you know, I go down the toy aisles with them and stuff, and I noticed that, that even though the packaging has gone back in time to try to get parents catch our eye from when we were kids, like, oh, yeah, I remember He-Man, I remember Star Wars. Oh, exactly. The the actual toy itself is not what it used to be. I mean, I that one, I, I don't know why they even have the, the hood could open up. It's totally missing now, but you can see inside the engine. And it's like, I was thinking about that on the way here. I'm like, there's no way that anybody was... You know, it didn't actually work. It wasn't a real land speeder, so I don't know why they needed to, to have that. But I think that matches up with the kinds of play that kids did in the '70s. I think it. I, I, I they want to see how that. things work. They take I, things apart, put it back together. Exactly. Again. I, I I agree with that because if you look at uh, stores, there used to be rows and rows of model airplanes, yeah. model rockets, model cars, things like that, and you could put a engine together. Right. right. You you learn the parts of an engine by putting it together with a, a model. And so you're absolutely right. If I can open the hood on this, oh, I see how it works. Right. And so some of those kids that wanted to see how it works are now engineers. But today, yeah, who, who cares? Right. It, and I just called AAA. It was a much more, and that, that's a great point. And, you know, if my speeder broke down too, I'd be like, you know. But, I mean, it's, it's like... The uh, the very disposable nature of our culture now, where if it doesn't work, just chuck it. Oh, right. It didn't exist back then. No. If your toy broke, you're going to fix it, right? <laughs> you exactly. Know, and a lot of them didn't break very easily because they were made a much more durable. No, I uh, mean, because look at it. This uh, Star Wars came out in 1977, so that's over 40 years ago. Right. This is a 40-year-old toy made of plastic. And it still... And it still exists. It's almost nuclear hardened. Right. And another thing to, to consider, you know, Star Wars blindsided everybody. They did not expect the response that they got, especially from the younger audiences, because in the 70s, movies, for the most part, were made for adults. Little kids, but not adult movies but you know it's like the, the kids had tv the adults had the movies and so by bringing this story like star wars out of you know because it's based in so many tales from you know the wizard of oz to fables and you know it, it, you know old lore and religion is steeped in that they bring it back in the 70s and it it really inspires kids it reaches them and so they weren't you know, in that era, they didn't make toys in tandem with movies like they did later on. I mean, th I, I remember toys coming out from movies that didn't really deserve a toy, you know, subsequently. Oh, exactly. Uh, but with Star Wars, like, oh, we got to make toys. And they had no toys for the following Christmas. Kenner had to send out uh, certificates saying, I owe you basically that, you know, for the holiday season, bring this in in the springtime in May of the following year or whatever. And we'll. And I and Kenner was so popular. Kenner, Mattel, all those uh, toy makers, uh, Milton Bradley. But then uh, Kenner went away by the early yeah. 80s, by 82, 83. Kenner was long gone. They weren't making toys anymore. I think they may have put too much into Star Wars because right. once they made the last, you know, of the trilogy, I remember throughout the 80s, they'd come up with a few other toys that had nothing to do with the movies. They were inspired by the movies, right. but they weren't actually from the movie. Right. So we were kind of like, well, we can't act out something we don't know. So I remember having this weird toy. It was supposed to be like an indoor speeder thing, and I'm like, they didn't actually have... It was like this green thing that spun around. I'm like, I, didn't, I don't remember that from the movie, so it's hard for me to you know connect it and then when they came out with the re-releases in the 90s right it was a different company altogether i think it was hasbro that took it over hasbro did take it over because they were doing everything with gi joe right and that's the the change of gi joe's size was inspired by that toy you're holding in your hand because right they because used to be huge. The, yeah gi joe's were like six seven feet and then when they were made smaller with this it's like okay that's the way we're going to go right and so we have to to match up so you know it's just that easy to talk about artifacts from the past that you would normally overlook right and look at that we got a 10 minute long conversation out of it how about that and i thank you so much for for joining me on the Very eps welcome. podcast thank live you. i am celebrating one year of the everything is a primary source podcast this week and i'd like to thank you for taking part by listening Please follow and share the podcast on social media, especially Instagram. 
and consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash EPS podcast. There you can reap benefits such as t-shirts, stickers, and coffee mugs, and depending on the tier, dictate the topics of future episodes. If nothing else, you can feel satisfied that you helped an independent podcaster produce more content for everyone's enjoyment. Next week, when we return to our regular schedule, short episodes like this one, which are products of my EPS podcast live exhibits, will be coming out on Tuesdays, while longer episodes, deeper dives into subjects are posted on Thursdays. I look forward to you tuning in again to the EPS podcast, where everything is a primary source.